Okay, just give me a clap, right? You're looking at the rum bill, and you're looking at me. I'm surrounded by some of the best rums in the world. Rum can make some of the most gorgeous cocktails on planet Earth. The drinks that Hemingway drank, the drinks that the pirates drank, or you can dump it in a punch bowl. If you don't know anything about rum, guess what? I'm going to tell you a little bit about rum. We are here at Aviv restaurant. There's Rob. Say hi to Rob. Rob. Hi, Rob. <laughs> hi, Rob. There's Al. Okay, and back to me. Back to me. And back to the rums. Because that's what we're doing here today. We're talking about the golden elixir we call rum. Now, rum, just like vodka, just like whiskey, just like gin, just like tequila, is distilled. It comes from a plant. In rum's case, nine times out of ten, it comes from sugar cane or sugar juice from the cane plant or from molasses, which is a byproduct of sugarcane. So, let's say you're a rum newbie. You want to start with the white stuff, the stuff that has not touched wood. It's unaged, it's been rested, and it's good to go. This is what drives and fuels the Caribbean. And the easiest drink to make with this good stuff, this, mm, this baby of mine, is an Ernest Hemingway favorite. It is the daiquiri. Three steps. One and a half of rum, one of lime, half of a syrup, sugar syrup or agave syrup. It's up to you. Shake the F out of it with fresh, clean, nice ice. You put it in a martini glass and drink it. Nothing is more simple than a daiquiri. Okay, forget about the blender. It's just too messy. Just robs the planet of our energy and stuff like that. I'm not gonna, don't get me started on that. That's it. That's why Hemingway that's why Hemingway. I'm just gonna leave it at Hemingway. Now, once you've perfected the daiquiri, three parts, right? Rum, lime, and sugar. We're gonna put this drink on steroids. We're gonna turn it into, boom, the mojito. Right there. It is a daiquiri with the inclusion of soda and mint. Okay, so basically we take our daiquiri, we get some of our mint, which we've had sitting in water so it doesn't go off. Mint can be somewhat fickle. Add your lime juice. Add your sugar. Muddle them gently into the glass. Infuse those oils and the botanicals of the fresh mint. Add your rum. And then you top with soda. And now you have Ernest Hemingway's second favorite drink, the Mojito Bill. I know you downed a couple of those when you were in Cuba. And America, you're about to find out about how great this small little island right off the coast of Miami really is. The mojito rocks. Daiquiri rocks more, but the mojito's really good. Bill put that down. These are really the greatest drinks that really express the flavor and the sugarcane aspect of what white rum is all about. Rum has traveled the world, and truth be told, rum is made on every continent of the planet, okay? It was what sailors took with them, it was what navy men took with them, it was what pirates traded with. It was a financial commodity back in the day, in the olden days. Once it gets put in a barrel for transport, it changes. It's no longer this one. It's a bit more like this one. And that's because of the char of the barrel. It's because of the oak. It's because of the vanilla. It's because of the tannin. And all of that stuff still makes it good. It just changes the personalities. So, you want to learn about dark rum really quickly? Dark and stormy, which is how I wake up every single day of the week, people. Okay, a dark and stormy starts with good quality ginger beer. Three and a half ounces of ginger beer, some ice in the glass, a couple of dashes of bitters, and then top it with a good, heaping, angry amount of dark rum. You get a nice little floater. You can see the change in the color of the drink. This is all you drink 247 anytime you go to a sandals. Sandals, hook me up. Dark and stormies, sandals, beach vacation. Call me sandals. Call me sandals. Call me. me too. All right, now when you, okay, you can call Bill too. He needs his own room. Now, we're gonna make a planter's punch here. And a planter's punch is simple. And you go, what's a punch? And it's like, whatever you got in the fridge orange juice, lemon juice, pineapple juice, 
maybe a bit of simple syrup, that's up to you. Dark rum and light rum. It's like cats and dogs getting married, people. But it tastes so good in the glass, we don't mind. Shake it, give it a good hit of ice. Strain it, garnish it with a pineapple, with an umbrella, with an orange, with a maraschino cherry, whatever you like. That's what you garnish it with, okay? But it is, once again, delicious. Now finally, if you are drinking a fine bottle of rum that has a number on its label, designating its age, forget about everything I just said. Don't do anything other than this. Take a really nice, gorgeous, juicy piece of ice, something like this, and put it into a glass, like I've already done, and just pour the contents of that number, that aged rum, over the big piece of ice. Let it get to meet itself for a couple of minutes, just, just a couple of minutes, because when it's aged like this, that's all you wanna do to your rum. Okay. And that, my friends, is all you really need to know about rum. There's a lot to know about it, don't get me wrong, but practice makes perfect. Right, Bill? That's right, and I think all I'll right. start practicing a There you go, you little uh, Hemingway uh, wannabe a daiquiri for you, and the big eye is for me. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. We'll see you in Cuba, America.